Hello, this is Clint Halstead and this is the introduction to microprocessors using design embedded systems with PIC microcontrollers, principles and applications, second edition with Tim Wilms by Tim Wilmshurst. Um, we're currently on chapter 5, section 3, which is subroutines, page 115 in the textbook. So today we're going to talk about subroutines. Some program sections uh, of your code are so useful that you would really like to reuse that assembly, assembly language code somewhere else. Uh, but you just don't want to copy and paste your code um, because it, you know every time you copy and paste your code it, it takes valuable program memory and many times your program memory is the limitation uh, to you know being able to because you only have a limited amount of space uh, to, to store your code. And you want your code to be very efficient. So subroutines save the day in that manner is that subroutines are sections of code that uh, get to be reused over and over again. And they can be called uh, simply. So once the subroutine has been executed, the main program continues to execute from where it left off. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. So how, did the, how does the subroutine work? This is a pictorial diagram of, of how the subroutine ideas work. You basically have your uh, main program. You write your code here. Um, you say, you know, do this, do that, do something else. And you say, well, I want to, I want to do this certain amount of code that I just want to repeat called SR1. So you use the call statement. Okay. So this is assembly language code for the PIC16. Uh, microcontroller and one of the instructions is a call instruction so that's that's the way you use it, you just type call and then uh, the name of the label for that section of code so SR1 then it would jump over here to uh, it would jump over here to SR1 it would execute all these instructions and, and then when it sees the return statement then it uh, <clears throat> it just returns back. It goes back to where it was at before. Now, how does it do that? Well, the way the the microprocessor does that is it uh, actually uses something called a stack. So let's look at that really quick. The stack. How does the stack work? Well, when it calls this program SR1, the subroutine. What it does is it just simply takes the number. Remember, this is the PC counter. This is the the location in the memory in the double EEPROM. Takes that value and just stores it into what we call a stack. So here you can see the four. It just so when it calls it over to this subroutine, it takes the the location of this and stores it on the stack. And then once it gets a return statement, it says, okay, well, take this number four and then increment it by one and that'll give us this next instruction so that's the way internally it works but as far as you're concerned the way it, the way it looks like it just looks like it's calling this SR1 subroutine it returns and then continues operation as normal so there's really to, for the user standpoint uh, it doesn't really interrupt his code at all it doesn't really uh, cause any issues the only problem is you can nest these subroutines or you can say you can have a call statement uh, to this subroutine then you can have a call statement inside of this subroutine to go to another subroutine so when that happens uh, let's, let's see and see what that happens when we do that let's say that we have a call instruction over here okay oh let's go back to this Let's go to slideshow, current slide. Okay, so let's say that we we call, we have a call statement that goes to this subroutine. Now we go down here and we have another call statement. Let's say this section of code may be at location 20 in your memory, in your double EEPROM. Well, what happens there is, well, it's already stored the 4. Now it has to store the 20 on the stack. Okay, so that's what happens on the stack. Now you have some... You call, let's say you're calling SR2, just for example. So now it goes to here. Uh, so that's called a nested subroutine. So nested. 
Okay. When you call uh, a subroutine, when you call to a subroutine, and then you call another into another subroutine, or, uh, so you basically have two call statements. That's called nested subroutines. Now over here, you're executing your code. Now let's say that you you have another call statement. Okay. Let's say this may be location 42. Well, then it, it's called, it pushes the 42 to the stack. Really, it's like bookmarks. You have to think of it kind of like, you know, reading a book. When you're, when you're reading a book, you know, and you come to a section that says go to, go to some other page, you put a bookmark into your book, uh, maybe on page 4, put a bookmark, and then you go to page 20, and you turn to page 20 in your book. You know, let's say this is your book and this is page 20. And then if on page 20 it says go to page 42, you'll put in another bookmark. You can't use the same bookmark. You have to use another bookmark. So that's really all it's doing. This is like a book. This, these are like bookmarks over here. Okay. It's like a bookmark. It's just marking the place where you, you left off. Now once you get to your return statement here, well, how does the microprocessor know what to do? Well, it, it goes over here to the uh, stack. It takes this 42 and it sets the program counter. Remember, the program counter is what keeps keeps your current uh, where you're currently executing program code at. But it adds uh, one to it. So it says 42. Of course, it adds one to it. So um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. This is a 42. If you were to call into this and you go to another place, and then when you when it returns over here, then it goes back to uh, 43, and then gets to this instruction, then it hits this return, and it says, okay, well let's grab this value, PC 20. You add one to it, it gives you 21, so it takes you basically right here to 21. Then you continue execution to you get to this return. And then it goes to the next piece of your stack and then says, okay, well, this sets the program counter to 4 uh, plus 1. That gives you 5. So that means it jumps over here to 5. <coughs> and then it continues executing your code. So that's, that's the way the subroutines work and that's the way the stack works. Now in the PIC 16F84, uh, the one that we're using, 84A, it only has a stack of eight. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it has one, uh, two, dot, 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 all the way to eight. And then after that, so you can only nest uh, up to eight, eight times. And after that, then you can't really do it anymore. You'd have to figure out another way to do it. And we can talk some, about some ways to do that later. But for right now, we're just going to say that we, we can do only eight. Okay, so, so those are the two instructions that we have just learned for this lesson. We learned the call instruction and the return instruction. And they're very, very useful instructions to be using. I would say try programming exercise 5.3. And um, I'll give you the solution to that later. But I want you to try it on your own in the book um, on page 116. Uh, that's that's my recommendation to try that and that would help you out to do it on your own so you can this is an MP lab uh, programming example you can use the, the simulator to do that okay using MP lab X so if we go over we've been keeping track of our the, the instructions that we've been learning in the pick 16 instruction set so today we learned two instructions so we learned, where are they at? Okay, there's the call instruction. We learned call and then we learned return. So that's that's what those are. Um, you just put the word call and then you put the label. So the way it works is if you have some code here and you have, um, the way you, you create it is you, you say maybe you have a delay section of code and then you start writing move uh, w to f move literal to w so you just you 
you type a word here, delay, or whatever word you want to use here, in the, lo the very first location, uh, you know, if this is your text editor, the very first location, that, that makes it a label. And then uh, if you want to start executing that code, uh, and then this is your return. So if you want to execute that code, then all you have to do is, if you have your code right here, this is your program code. All you do is you say call and then delay. Okay, so call delay, and uh, since you've put a label here uh, in this section of code, then it'll uh, it'll actually assign delay the value. Um, of this location that's going to be in memory. So wherever this happens to be in your EE prom, which is your compiler, it figures that out. So it doesn't really matter to you what number is assigned to this. It may be 44, maybe 45, maybe 10. You don't really know, you don't really care. The compiler assigns a, a number to that to where it's going to be at in your code, depending on how you write your code. Um, you know, the further on down in your code th this statement is, then the, the larger the number is going to be that's going to be assigned to that value. Um, so anyway, it's pretty transparent to the user. It doesn't really matter. The point is, is you you have a way to make a, a label, a reference to your uh, subroutine code, and you just use call. Uh, so these are the two instructions that we we've learned today: call and return. You can see call takes one parameter, which is the um, the label, which we just talked about. It's k. And it takes two instructions, it takes two cycles to operate and doesn't affect the status register at all. And return statement there takes no parameter. There's nothing that it needs. It takes uh, two cycles as well. So that's about it. So I'll, I'll see you in the next lesson. We're going to learn how to use some delay, uh, some delay uh, macro, or actually some delay uh, subroutines. Okay? Thanks. See you for the next lesson.